meeting DJ Jazzy Jeff was one of the most epic times in my career. I almost passed out because uh, I spent I spent I spent a lot of times emulating a lot of a lot of nights, man, a lot of freaking wet face nights, trying to understand why I can't get this transformer scratch sounding like Jazzy Jeff or Cash Money. And I, I tell I told them both when I met them. It's like, man, dude, I've spent you know I got grounded many times up at night with mom telling what the hell is that sound coming out of your room at four in the morning you're supposed to be asleep for school in the morning we gotta get up at eight but when i first met jazzy jeff and he did one of the routines that i was always still to this very day inspired by that dance to the drummer's beat routine and i told him it was a it was a it was an epic moment for me when i met him and it was, it was an even more epic moment when he gave me props after my set, you know, so work comes right back. I knew DJing was going to be my path because I couldn't sing. <laughs> and once I figured that out, you know, singing one time in the shower versus singing in front of your girl or whatever, it's like, this is night and day, you know, so maybe I'll sing with these, I'll speak with my hands. Once I came to terms with the fact that I couldn't sing, I was cool with DJing. When I was about 14, just getting into DJing, that's when it first started getting solid for me that I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna be something and I'm gonna, you know, at that time, I'm gonna sound like so-and-so, I'm gonna sound like so-and-so. Cause you know, you didn't have your, you didn't have your own original thing worked out yet. You know, my sound was basically like Jam Master J and, you know, Jazzy Jeff and, you know, Mix Master Ice, DJs like that, that were influencing me. My sound was like a mirror to their sound because that was my influence. And me biting their sound, which everybody bites. Again, it's just a matter of what you, you know, you add it to yourself and then you create your thing from what you got influenced by, but not just biting and put it over here. Straight plagiarism or whatever. But, um, you know, you, you, you get bits and pieces from everybody. And once you get older, you start refining it and then you get your sound. That added a lot to my whole creativity. Technology's changed the DJ game. I mean, it's it's giving you access to your music. A lot of people think that, like when Serato first came out, we had all the haters coming out of the left front. I was one as well. Um, that thinking that a DJ's for you, doesn't DJ's for you. If you're a whack DJ with Serato, I mean, you're a whack DJ with Serato. If you dope DJ with Serato, you'd be a dope DJ with Serato. Dope or DJ with Serato. It just gives you access to your music versus back in the day where you had to carry the crates and you know go to the airport and the airline person see you coming with crates and start smiling because they know that's that's a hundred dollars, that's a hundred dollars, you know, this is bank for the company. I love it. I love I love the digital age. I miss being able to actually, you know, the tangible part of feeling vinyl and that record that you pull out at 12 o'clock that you know you're gonna play, that's gonna smash the place. I miss that part. But having a, a gazillion MP3s is actually, to me, more hectic than having a room full of records. You know, records, you had record covers. You can identify the MP3s, you just get lost in the sauce on your computer. But it's, it's, a, it's the greatest thing since sliced bread to me. No more carrying crates, no more, carrying all this bulky equipment, you have access to stems, you have access to music, you have access to drops, everything at your disposal at a show. It's how you work it into your repertoire, you know, how you're in your, into your performance. Three of my most underrated favorite DJs, uh, and I don't know why, DJ Woody, DJ Kentaro, DJ Uncut. Three dope, crazy, D D dope DJs, man, because of their styles and they're always pushing the turntablism envelope forward a lot of people don't get it you know because you, you shoot over their heads or whatever but as far as their creativity and what they add to turntablism the art form as a whole i love it i'm inspired by it just don't know why they're so underrated don't get it when biggs made the bet that i couldn't do those scratches over that i made up you know we made a bet for a nice substantial amount of money and of course he lost and i bought a nice little vehicle with that money I'm still thinking that's a, some sound guy or whatever. And he's going, da, 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 and I go, huh? And he just stole on me. Pop clocked me like right around here. He, like he's, he got me good. The plate hangs on a rope with the, is, with the food that Flavor ate with the bite out of the burger that he left on the plate. You know, our radio show was never a platform 
to get someplace else. It was it was the end result. It's what we wanted. We we didn't have any ambitions for the show other than like Bob always says, other than to have an incredible tape the next day. 